All right, this is the last section for chapter five, section 5.4, and this is factoring special trinomials. So there's two different ones here. The first one is what they're called difference of squares. Those are the first ones we're gonna look at. And what they usually do is they have um, what's called a perfect square. So you'll be able to take the square root of x, or we'll call it a, the square root of a, and it's a difference, so it has to be a subtraction, and you should be able to take the square root of the second number. Perfect square trinomials um, are in the form, just like we've seen before, x squared plus bx plus c. But what usually ends up happening is that the end number, you should be able to have two numbers that multiply to the end number, and they should both be exactly the same. So the end number should be a perfect square as well. And the middle number will give you a hint for that. So these are both dealing with perfect squares. <clears throat> the first one here. First, one, first thing I want you to do is to multiply this out. So we've done this before with foiling. We have x squared plus 3x. Next we have minus 3x minus 9. Next I collect like terms. If you notice my three x's are common, one is plus though, and one is minus, which means they cancel out. And I'm left with just x squared minus nine. <clears throat> if you look at the x squared minus nine, this is a difference of squares. The reason for that is because x squared, I can take the square root of, and the square root of x squared is x. 9 I can also take the square root of and the square root of 9 is 3. And because they're a difference of squares and I need the middle term with the x to fall away, one must be plus and one must be minus. For this reason up here, when I multiplied it out when one was minus and one was plus, the middle term disappears. So if you see the question x squared minus 9, it factors into x plus 3 and x minus 3. Take the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 9 is 3. So the square root of the first one goes in the first spot, and the square root of the second one goes in the second spot. <clears throat> so the next one we have is m squared minus 16. I want you to factor, and m squared plus 16. This is a difference of squares. This here has a plus sign, so we can't do it. So it must be a subtraction to be a difference of squares. The plus sign doesn't work because like we see up here, if you have a plus sign, well, if you have plus plus, that middle term doesn't go away. It would, there would actually be something there. So this one doesn't work, you cannot factor it. This one, however, you can. You set up your set of brackets, you take the square root of m squared, you take the square root of 16. Square root of m squared is m, it goes in the first spot. Square root of 16 is 4, it goes in the second spot. 1's plus, 1's minus, and you're done. Next one, factor 16c squared and minus 25a squared. It's a difference, good. Is there any common factor between 16 and 25? Nope. Can I take the square root of 16? Yes. Can I take the square root of 25? Yes. So same thing, set up your set of brackets. <clears throat> First square root of 16 is 4. Square root of c squared is c. So the first spot is 4c. Second one, 25, is 5, and a squared is a. So my second spot is 5a. One's plus. One's minus. This one's a bit different because we have a number in front of both and we have a letter on both. But still, both are perfect squares because I have a 16, which is 4, and a c squared, which is c. 25, which is 5, and a squared, which is a. So it still works, and you're done. So, moving down to step two, 
these are what are called perfect square trinomials. So perfect square trinomials. So if I was to factor this the way from last chat, last section, I would say, okay, there's no number in front of the x, that's good. There's a 9, so I need two numbers that multiply to 9 and add to a 6. 3 and 3. They're both going to be exactly the same with these type. Because they're both the same, you can do it exactly the way you did before. x plus 3 and x plus 3. They're both positive. Everything's positive here. Positive 3, positive 6. Because they're both the same, though, I can rewrite that as simply x plus 3 all squared. I don't have to write two separate ones. So typically, this is the answer you will see on a provincial exam. If it said factor this, and you had a bunch of answers there, this would typically be one of your answers. Okay? It's not that this is wrong, it's that this is more, uh, this is simpler. And the last one, again, this is a perfect square trinomial. 2, 44, and 242 all have a common factor. They all have a GCF. Can you see what it is? I think you probably guessed it. It's 2. So the first thing I do is I factor out a 2. When I factor out a 2, I'm left with x to the power of 4. You might be thinking, why aren't I factoring out an x? That last term has none. If one term is missing an x, you can't factor it out. Minus 22x plus 121. <clears throat> you look at the last number 121. I can see right away that this is a perfect square. Um, this one happens to be 11. And I know 11 plus 11 is negative 22. Negative 11 plus negative 11. So you could do it the way you did before. 121 is 11 and 11. Those both add to negative 21 if they're both negative. Therefore, my two things are, uh-oh, I got an x to the power of 4 this time. Well, what's the square root of x to the power of 4? It's got to be x squared. Right? x squared. You can check that by multiplying x squared times x squared. You get x to the power of 4. My two factors are x squared minus 11 and x squared minus 11. Lastly, because they're both the same, I just rewrite that as x squared minus 11 all squared. Note, sometimes when you factor these, if you had an example like this, if you got down and you did some work and you came down to 2, this is a completely separate question, if you got x squared minus 16, something like that, then you could factor one of those If you got something like this, x squared minus 16, x squared plus 16, if that's what your perfect square factored into, this one here is also a difference of squares. And I know that's 4, so it's going to be x plus 4, x minus 4. This one is not a difference of squares, so that one stays x squared plus 16. Sometimes that happens, not often, but sometimes you end up factoring out your difference of squares, and then one of your difference of squares ends up being another difference of squares. Okay, I know that 16 times 16 is, I think, 256. 16 times 16 is 256. So this one might actually look like this. You'd have x to the power of 4 minus 256. And if you were to factor, let's get rid of that 2 in front because that doesn't make sense. <clears throat> if you were to factor this out, you get x squared because you take the square root of that and the square root of 256 is 16 so you get x squared plus 16 and x squared minus 16 and then the x squared minus 16 breaks into x plus 4 x minus 4 because that's another difference of squares subtraction and two squares okay so the couple things to go over there you can review the video too there are difference of squares which we did simply just Take the square root of each one, one's plus, one's minus. And the perfect square trinomial where it ends up being a perfect square. So you just rewrite it as your factor squared. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, watch the video again. And if you have any more questions, just give me a video.